everyone. So in this episode, we're going to be making sodium bromate from uh, sodium bromide in very similar fashion to how we make sodium chlorate. However, it's actually going to be surprisingly um, considerably easier making sodium bromate than it was making sodium chlorate. Bromates are interesting oxidizers. They have quite similar properties to chlorates and are, you know, quite often overshadowed by chlorates. And you very rarely see uh, bromates being used. It's kind of like when you find out your favorite celebrity has a sibling. You know the sibling can probably do all the things that the other famous sibling can do, but you just never see the less famous sibling, so you never actually get to see what they can do. That's what bromates are. You know, chlorates are Jaden Smith and bromates are whoever else Will Smith's kids are. Our source of bromide is going to be this product here called Bromstart, which quite personally I think is a dreadful name. It contains 99% sodium bromide, 1% inert ingredients, whatever that is, um, which should be a good enough um, purity for us now because we're going to have to recrist everything later on, so um, those inert ingredients shouldn't matter at all. So this is a product that's sold for use in like, I guess spas or something. I didn't buy this myself. Um, this actually has come from America. I don't believe sodium bromide is an over-the-counter product in Australia. I know that we sell kind of some bromine products, but they're sort of weird organic molecules rather than just sodium bromide. So someone sent this to me last Christmas, so it was a while ago. So this is an over-the-counter product in America, and I think it's relatively cheap. There's, I think, 56 grams in here. Two ounces, yeah, America. Um, so I've got two of them, so that's four ounces of sodium bromide which is uh, in a real unit that's about 112 grams. So uh, I guess I'll be using one pack of this. The big difference from last time is that last time we used MMO and titanium as the uh, electrodes. However, this time we can't use our fancy electrodes, which is a bit of a shame, but that's because uh, the titanium that the MMO is um, plated onto, or like coated onto, for the anode doesn't survive against the, uh, the bromide electrolysis. So while the MMO coating does, if you have any slight imperfections in there, which of course naturally happen and of course happen quite substantially for me, seeing as I think I pretty, pretty, um, you know, stuffed over my electrodes during the chlorate stuff, that titanium then really starts to corrode. Rather than using, using that, I thought I might as well just use both graphite electrodes here. So I've very, very crudely hot glued this two pegs together here and got ourselves a little, um, Set up, we can just run it in a beaker as well. Um, that's, a, that's a difference as well, because last time we were generating a bit of chlorine that needed scrubbing out. But this time we're gonna generate a little bit of bromine, but that's not not as volatile. So we don't need to scrub. I need to build a scrubber. I'll put a, like a, a crude cover on it. All right, and we'll add two pounds of our, two ounces of our fresh American Brom start to hot water here. It should dissolve fairly easily in this amount of water. And the magic ingredient, just a smidge of sodium dichromate. Oh yeah. All right, here it's all hooked up. Uh, we don't have to worry about positives and negatives this time, which is good. It'd be nice if my crocodile clips actually fit properly on the electrodes, but who cares? Uh, we'll turn it on. And hopefully we actually get some voltage, which we do not. Okay, maybe now. Yeah. All right, crank it to maximum. Oh yeah. Look at it go. Oh yeah. There's two big reasons why running a sodium bromate cell is a lot easier than running a sodium chlorate cell. The first reason is that bromates are so incredibly difficult to make that they virtually don't exist. Um, so that means you have this problem with the chlorate cell in that you can potentially sort of over oxidize a lot of the chlorate to perchlorate under certain conditions and you have to sort of watch out for with that. With a bromate cell, you're not gonna make bromates. So there's just not a thing you have to worry about. So you can just let it run um, without fear of over oxidizing it. Also with a sodium chlorate cell, sodium chlorate is more soluble than sodium chloride. So you have to keep like pushing the equilibrium and and um, you know adding more chloride until eventually you get chlorate crystals. But like a potassium chlorate cell actually, um, 
sodium bromate is less soluble than sodium bromide. So as we're running it, and it's, oh, it's gonna be impossible to see on camera, but this is actually full of crystals now. It's been running for about 60 hours, 60, 70 hours, um, and we're, it was full of um, crystals. Also, yes, it is very black, and also there's some iron oxide stains there. That's where I put the pegs there and was holding it with the pegs. That was a bit of a stupid idea because all the metal bits in the peg rusted, put all the rust in the solution as well. So, But that'll be filtered out with the graphite, with the hot filtration when we do the recrisp. So nothing to worry about. It just looks like trash for the moment, as per usual. All right, I've stopped running it. It's been running for about 80 to 90 hours. One thing I didn't do, which I did with the chlorate cell, was pH adjustments. Just like with the chlorate cell, there's obviously, um, you want it to be acidic, so you want to break down the hyperbromate iron into bromate and bromide. The real reason is I just generally forgot to pH adjust. <laughs> um, but it doesn't really matter for this sort of small cell. It's just a little bit of efficiency that um, you lose, but it doesn't matter too much. Uh, I just checked the pH then, and we're at a pH of about 9 after all that time. I don't think that's, it's really not too much of an issue. I'm just sort of flying through this project because, you know, I just want a small amount of bromate. So I'm just going to make some and, and that's fine. I don't have to get, you know, every single ounce of efficiency out of this. We're letting it just cool down. It's still quite warm, but you can see we're starting to get like lots of crystals this on the side there too. So we'll put this in the fridge and uh, we should get a whole heap of stuff out of there. All right, here's our crude product. It's about 60 grams of crude product, which is actually a lot more than I thought there was gonna be. A lot of the small graphite um, pieces have gone through, so we're just left with the, the large graphite pieces. It looks like a lot of graphite, because this product is, you know, black as anything, but really, there's not that much graphite. If we look at the electrodes, they've done really well, especially they were um, cheap Chinese electrodes from eBay. You know, as soon as you buy some sort of cheap Chinese stuff, there's a tendency for it to be absolutely shit house but um they've um yeah proven me wrong so you can see there's really not that much graphite has come off these electrodes so um you know a small amount goes a long way to making this product look awful we're going to dissolve this up in probably about 80 mils of distilled water then we'll do a hot filtration Finally, I'm just going to boil off some water from the bromate solution um, so that when we cool it down, we get the most crystals out of it. Uh, the yellow colour is annoying, but I'm fairly sure it's just from like really, really tiny particles of graphite uh, form a, like a colloidal suspension. So there's no particles. They're not going to um, stay with our crystals, but um, form this yellow solution. It could also be a bromine type thing because bromine likes to form this sort of yellow coloured uh, solution from like trace amounts of bromine or... Um, hyperbromide or something, but the pH is fine. Here's our crystals. Uh, they don't look so on camera, but they're uh, a little yellow in person, so I'm just going to run some very cold distilled water through it and then some ethanol to dry it, and hopefully that removes the yellow colour from the crystals. I can't really seem to get all the yellow colour out of it. It's only very slight. And to be honest, that could actually be the colour of bromate. Sodium bromate, like slightly yellow. It looks fine. It looks good. Actually, it looks really good. So, um, it's still a little bit wet, so I'm just going to leave it to dry. Alright, now comes the part where I prove that I've made what I've said I've made. So, the first test we can do is melting point. So, sodium bromate has a melting point of about 380, which I should be able to achieve just... Um, with this lighter here, where sodium bromide has a melting point of about 750, which there's no way I'm going to be able to heat it to this temperature. So if it melts uh, over this sort of flame, then um, it's sodium bromate. Yep, well that definitely melted, so that's, uh, that's a great sign. So the next test involves its ability as an oxidizer. So now I've got some sodium bromate there, or what I believe is sodium bromate, and I've added some 
table sugar there. So this time when we heat it, hopefully we should see a reaction when it melts and should see that powerful uh, yellow sodium flame. Mm. Not very stoichiometric a mix, but that worked all right, but I reckon we can do better. The bromate's still a bit wet, so this might be a bit more sluggish than what we would expect, but hopefully we see a mix. So this is roughly equal parts bromate sugar. I didn't measure anything out, but... That's it. Oh. All right. Well, let's definitely an oxidizer with a low melting point, so I conclude that I have successfully made sodium bromate. Thanks uh, very much for watching. Um, this stuff has just got to dry, but that's boring. Um, so I'll report my yield in the description. <laughs> um, I'll see you next time. Thanks for thanks for tuning in.